ম্যানেজমেন্ট not only this how to communicate the information with your patient how to satisfy your patient at the same time you guys may remember last week or my last session we discussed about some capabilities a uk trained doctor has to gain it it's not only for uk doctor all over the world there are some capabilities we should acquire to make us a better doctor uh, all over the world not only in, in your own country so the outline is very very simple today we have a 15 minute session on a mock consultation uh, on a, a scenario then uh, another 15 minutes we will discuss about the mock consultation then the next 15 minutes if maria allowed me and you guys i can take few questions okay within 15 minutes within 15 minutes as many as possible the question can be based on chest pain it can be based on how to work in uk how to work in nhs about your uh, uh, plab exam whatever uh, uh, i know you guys have a lots of question about uh, plab working in the uk and the training all those things feel free to ask me please and the last 15 minutes i will try my best to uh, touch on uh, uk guidelines on the chest pain okay so hopefully and and uh, a one hour session will be very lively and we all enjoy this one hour session so maria shall we start our yes. mock consultation please okay so <clears throat> usually let me tell you something usually this mock consultation are face to face it's very difficult to show you the that the, the the real picture online but we'll try our best uh to show you at least give you a basic how to take an a, a, a consultation presenting with chest pain okay maria so maria is going to be a doctor and i'm going to be a patient and all the best thank yes, you yes maria yes, okay thank you before starting the uh, session i would like to describe the real life scenario uh, then here, here is the scenario yeah. uh, you are an st on call in a district hospital emergency michael nixon 
this uh, 52 year old man <clears throat> has been having chest pains for uh, for the over a month they are always on exer exertion is with rest and sometimes come on a con common after a heavy meal he is a heavy smoker his father died from a myocardial infection at the age of 42 and also brother had heart disease at younger age the patient is not taking any medications his blood pressure today was 175 by 100 pulse 80 i'm worried that the chest pains may have a serious underlying cause so this uh, was the scenario uh, and now we have our more consultations okay so uh, it's very clear and uh, it's a middle-aged man presenting with chest pain over a month and it's mainly coming uh, on when he's exerting himself, he's going stairs, and it's been over a month and it's an on and off pain. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is uh, this is the scenario. We'll see how how I can take the history of this uh, consultation. Okay, Maria, yes. Oh. Or can I? So can we do one? Can uh, can we screen share, Maria? So it will be easy sure. for, yeah. Sure. Sir. Uh -huh. All right, so before uh, before we starting our um, mock consultation, so guys, just a quick recap. So we have a 52 years old man having chest pain for over a month, worse on exertion. It get ease with rest, and he, he gets the pain sometimes after heavy meal. And he's a heavy smoker. His father died from MI at the age of 40, 42. Brother had heart attack at younger age as well. And his blood pressure is 175 over 100. Pulse is normal 80. And this gentleman is worried about chest pain. So my question for you, all the uh, students listening, a 30 second brainstorming. How you are going to approach this gentleman? What are the risk factors? Can you think about him? And five important differential diagnoses. So 30 second. It. Uh, so as we don't have much time today, 15 seconds brainstorming. Think about 15 seconds. Five important differential diagnoses. What are the risk factors you need to talk and how you are going to approach this gentleman? Okay, so shall we, shall we start then? Let's go. Yes, Maria. Sure, sir. Okay, uh, now I'll be uh, I'll play the role of a doctor and start with my patient. Shall we start? Hello, good morning. Good morning, doctor. Is it Michael Nixon? Yes, it is. Is it okay to call you Michael? Yes, of course. Why not? Please. Hi, Michael. This is Dr. Maria. Nice to meet you. Thank you, doctor. How, how can I help you today? Well, doctor, actually, I'm a bit worried. I'm having a chest pain that's really, really concerning me. I'm so sorry to hear about it. You, mentioned, okay, that you, are, you mentioned that you are worried. What are you worried about? Well, doctor, my, my, my brother, he had a similar problem. And very unfortunately, he ended up having a heart attack. It's really concerning me. I'm so sorry to have that. Is, it, is your brother with open now? Oh, he's fine now, doctor. He's doing well. Yeah. Do you have any pain right now? Uh, no, no. Now I, I'm fine, doctor. You mentioned chest pain. Uh, could you tell me more about your pain? Well, doctor, it's been a, it's been over a month now, and I'm really having the pain. It's on and off, especially you know when I'm walking up the stairs, and it's very difficult for me to carry on walking. I have to stop and take breath to carry on uh, my walking. It's really bothering me. Where is the pain? 
Uh, it's, it's, it's in the middle of my chest, doctor. When did the pain first start? Uh, uh, roughly, it's been a month now. When was the last time you had the chest pain? As far as I remember, doctor, it was around three days ago I had last chest pain. Did the pain come on suddenly or gradually? Uh, actually, what happened, doctor, it, it's, it does come very abruptly and it only lasts for a few seconds to few few minutes maybe and it does go away. What brings on the pain? Uh, well, as I mentioned to you, I notice it is mainly when I'm when I'm, I'm exerting myself. I am walking too fast. I'm climbing stairs, going uphill, and I noticed I get the pain. All right. H how long did the pain uh, last for? Uh, I would say roughly between few seconds to up to five minutes could be. Uh, when you feel the pain, uh, how do you describe the pain? Well, doctor, uh, I would say uh, it's, a, it's a bit crushing pain in my chest. I feel something crushing inside my chest. Sometimes I also felt um, it's burning in my chest as well. Uh, does it move in any other place? Uh, not really, no. Does it move to your shoulder, back, jaw, or arm? As far as I remember, no, doctor, no, it does not. Does anything make the pain worse? Well, as I mentioned to you, it's mainly actually actually when I exert myself, as I said to you earlier, going uphill, going stairs. Uh, yeah, it does make worse. Uh, does anything make the pain later? Uh, well, as far as I remember, when I take rest and it does settle down. Uh, how do you score the pain uh, on a scale of zero to 10? How severe is the pain? If zero is no pain and 10 is the worst pain you have ever experienced? Well, uh, I would say, you know, when it started first, initially it was three out of 10, but I think it's, it's progressively, progressively getting worse. Nowadays it can reach up to seven out of 10, doctor. Uh, did you have any other symptoms? Like, did you feel sick with that? Uh, not really, no. Uh, when you had chest pain, uh, did you feel sweaty at all? Uh, no, no. Did you feel your heart racing in your chest? Not really, no. Did you feel dizzy? Uh, no, not at all. Have you had a cough or cold recently? Uh, no, doctor. Have you coughed up any blood by any chance? Uh, no, no, of course not. Do you experience any pain on the back of your legs? Uh, no, I don't think so, doctor. Is the pain brought on uh, by deep breathing, manual pressure over the chest or body position? Uh, uh, no, not really, no. Did you have any recent trauma? Uh, no, no, doctor. Any pain in your, in your tummy? Uh, not at all, no. Are you suffering from any reflex? Not really, no. Uh, we discussed about your symptoms. Uh, let's move on to your medical history as they are very important to know when somebody comes with chest pain. Have you, okay. been, diagnosed with, have you been diagnosed with any medical condition? Uh, not really, really, doctor. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm quite fit, man. How about any heart disease? H uh, heart disease or hypertension, diabetes mellitus, or high cholesterol? Uh -huh. Not I'm aware of it, no. Have you ever been hospitalized for any reason? No, I can't remember, no. Have you ever had any surgery in the past? No, I cannot remember anything like this, no. Uh, let's uh, talk about your family. You mentioned uh, your brother had a heart attack. Is there any other family members of yours had any heart problem or stroke? Uh, well, as I said to you earlier, doctor, my, 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 my younger brother had a heart attack and my dad actually died from heart attack. I'm so sorry to hear that. No problem. Thank you. Would you mind asking you at what age they had heart attack? Uh, well, as far as I remember, my father was his, around his 50. Uh, 
and my brother was around his 30 when he got heart attack. Are you currently taking any uh, prescribed medications or over-the-counter treatments? Uh, not really, no. Uh, are you allergic to something? Like uh, uh, no, doctor, no. Uh, in terms of home, who do, uh, lives with you at home? Uh, well, I, I live on my, uh, on my own. What do you do for a living? Uh, actually, uh, I work as a lorry driver. All right. Uh, do you, uh, did you experience any pain while driving? Uh, not really, no. Do you uh, get any chest pain while at work? Uh, sometimes, yes, sometimes. Any stress at home or work? Well, uh, I live alone and, you know, uh, there is some stress. There is some stress. I live alone. It's, it's very difficult for me to cope with sometimes, you know, to chat with people. I, I, I feel lonely. Any stress else in life? Uh, no, apart from some loneliness. Have you had any recent travel? Uh, not really. Mr. Nixon, when it comes to the question of chest pain, it's important for us to know your lifestyle as it has a significant effect on your health. May I? Yes, please. Yes, go ahead, doctor. Please. Uh, doctor, uh, do you smoke? Uh, yes, I do. How many cigarettes do you smoke each day? Uh, well, uh, nearly 20 a day. How long have you been smoking? It's been over 25 years I've been smoking. Have you ever thought to cut down or stop it? Well, I did try, but you know, I could not. I failed to quit smoking. It's difficult for me to stop. Why? Why did you fail to quit? Well, it gives me anxiety. Every, every time I tried, it gave me anxiety, so I cannot. Let's ask about you some personal question. Will no problem. You? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah. In terms of alcohol, do you drink any alcohol? Uh, no, not at all. In uh, terms of exercise, do you, uh, do you do any exercise? Well, uh, I'm quite physically active, doctor. I go for jogging. I go for walk. Over the weekend, especially, yes, I do. Oh, that's wonderful. What's your Thank typical you. diet like? Well, I, I would say, well, I'm quite a vegan people. I like vegetarian diet, so I, I, I try salad, fruits, and all types of vegetables. I'm a vegetarian. Oh, wow. By any chance, do you take any illicit drugs? Oh, no, no, not at all. Is there anything else that you like to ask me? Uh, well, doctor, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm quite worried. I'm quite concerned about the, about my heart. <clears throat> Do something for me, please. Mr. Uh, Nixon, any idea what uh, could be the reason for your chest pain? Uh, I'm not sure, doctor. I'm not sure. Is there anything, uh, anything else that you were worried about other than your heart? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really worried. I'm a, I'm a lorry driver and this is the only job that I've been doing for the last many years and I'm, I'm worried if I lost my job for that. Anything in particular you want me to do uh, today? Uh, well, it's just up to you. What, 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 what do you think is best for me? Yeah. To uh, better understand your uh, condition, I need to do something. I need to do some uh, examination. I'll examine your chest, your tummy, check your blood pressure, pulse. Is this okay with you? Yeah, 100%. Why not, please? Okay, so uh, we can stop at this step. Excellent. Thank you very much, Maria. You, you, you've done well, really, really well. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not. It's not. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, so we tried a little bit of picture of actually how uh, this communication skills uh, assessed during the exam. 
So uh, in PLAB exam, people who are going for PLAB, people who will go for MRCP, yeah, so you will definitely face uh, those uh, few consultation scenarios like this. Okay, so I can start from the examination part, okay? So easily in, in the exam scenario, when you mention about the examination, the examiner will look for what are the examination you need to do for this particular scenario. Uh, as soon as you mention about the examination, you don't, usually if it is a communication skill scenario, they usually don't uh, let you to do the examination. They will give you the result. So in this case, we already, we already know that this patient has high blood pressure, 170 over 100. Okay, so here is the most important thing is, is this okay with you? You are taking the consent of the patients to go for examination, okay? So the next one is the management. Before approaching the management, uh, I have a quick question for the students listening to me today, a 30 seconds brainstorming exercise. So what do you think the diagnosis could be in this case? What are the initial investigations you are going to arrange? And when you are managing this, this patient, what would be your reflection? Think about 30 seconds, 15 seconds. So 15 seconds, initial investigations, differential diagnosis, and how are you going to reflect? What are the facts you are going to reflect? Okay, so let's start. First, I'll go for this part, reflection, very, very important. So in the first 10 seconds, what are the risk factors I identify in this case? One is his family history. His brother died at early age from heart, pro sorry, his brother had a heart attack in early age. Uh, his father died from heart problem at early age. So this is the risk factors. Second risk factors here is smoking. Okay, you need to address smoking. So these are the two very, very important risk factors. Third risk factors in this case is hypertension, which is very, very important. Fourth factors you need to keep in your mind is his job. He's worried about his job. He said, I'm worried about losing my job. He's a lorry driver and a lorry driver with a chest pain, you need to address this. Okay, uh, because it's so important if he drives and he gets chest pain on driving, he will have an accident. He will kill himself along with his passenger. So if you don't mention about this driving thing, this is a big blinder. Okay, so these are the things we, we, we're going to address now and some of the things we should appreciate. So what are the things we need to appreciate? One, he said, uh, I am physically active. I appreciate that. Please keep it up. It's very important for us uh, doing exercise. So this is one of the very positive things. So we'll uh, think about positive side and the negative side. So negative side, there are four things I mentioned, few things I mentioned. Positive side, he uh, he has uh, he's physically active and his diet is not too bad. His diet is good as well. Okay, so let's move on how we are going to manage this patient. So it's not only the managing the cardiac problem, it is managing the whole scenario, guys. I'm telling you again, communication skill is not assessing your clinical knowledge. We all know ECG, we all know angiogram, we all know chest X-ray, but how are you gonna approach this management? This is what I am assessing on you, okay? Sir, the slide is not changing, sir. No, I'm changing it now, yeah. Oh, oh. What now, is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay, look, this gentleman is idea eyes. Remember the eyes, idea, concern, and expectation. So when I when Maria asked uh, the patient, "What is your uh, concern?" He said, I'm, I, "I'm worried about having a heart disease." Okay, so how would you uh, your, your reflection? If you don't reflect this, that means you didn't listen. How do you prove active listening? This is the way. 
Mr. Nixon, as you mentioned, you are worried about your about heart disease. To be honest with me, or to be honest with you, I am also worried about having heart disease as a doctor. Why? Then are you with me? Uh, make sure your patient is listening to you. Okay, because you mentioned your brother and your father had heart attack at very early age. Also, the symptoms you are telling me uh, uh, suggesting the pain could be from your heart, as well as your smoking history, uh, which can predispose you, which can uh, uh, make you a, a risky for having a heart problem. Are you agree with me? What do you think? So asking this question, what do you think? Are you agree with me? You are doing a patient-centered approach. If I talk, 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 and I, I have no bother about my patient is listening to me or not, if the patient is responding with me, is he understanding with me, does it make any sense? Are you with me? What do you think? Are you agree with me? Nine out of 10 patients, chest pain patient I managed in my career, Nine, 90, above 90%, they said, yes, doctor. Now, if this way you approach the patient, yes, doctor, I think so. Because nowadays, it's an it's a internet world, online world, people usually go and Google and they will find all the information. Okay, so management. So in order to better understand your condition, in order to make a diagnosis, I need to run, I need to arrange some uh, blood test for you and a ECG or the heart tracing. Uh, is it okay with you? Yes, doctor, please go ahead. Okay, so and in the meantime, strict safety net advice, very, very, very important. This is very, very important. Especially if you are in a hospital settings, for PLAP2 candidates, I'm telling you, when you are going to face these types of scenario, read the question, where are you now? Are you in a GP setting? Are you in a rural um, health center? Or are you in a, in, a, in a district hospital, secondary hospital? Similar for a uh, Bangladeshi candidate, many of you will be posted in a rural area in Chiragang, Silet, Rajshahi, rural area, you don't have any facilities of the bloods. You don't have any facilities of the ECG. So, because in this case, to arrange the blood, to arrange the ECG will take a day, a couple of days, a week even. So in the meantime, stick safety net advice. That means what the patient should do if he gets pain in this, uh, in this case. So Mr. Nixon, so I'm going to arrange those bloods, but it may take some time. In the meantime, if you develop any chest pain, and uh, which is quite bad, and the pain is moving to your neck, to your shoulder, to your back, then this is the spray, GTN spray you can uh, prescribe. This is the spray, take it. Then if the pain is settled down, that's fine. If not, after five minutes, take it again. If not settled down, call an ambulance or call 999. I don't know Bangladesh, uh, in Bangladesh, we have uh, the 999 facilities yet. Okay. Yes, sir, we do have these facilities. Facilities, excellent, excellent. Actually, actually it's been more than 10 years since uh, I, uh, I like, I work in Bangladesh or uh, my knowledge, my, my last 10 years knowledge is not very good about Bangladesh, but I, but I, I, I believe Bangladesh has advanced, is developing quite rapidly. So anyway, so quick safety net advice, guys. And who are coming to work in the UK, I'm telling you, when you are managing these types of scenario, always document, strict safety net advice given. Why? Because in case this patient get chest pain and died, and this case go to the court, Say this will save you. Strict safety net advice given. Okay, so for my patient benefit, for my own benefit, it's very important to document this. Then, 
we have non pharmacological approach we have pharmacological approach mr nixon you mentioned about smoking and you've been smoking for quite a long time and you're smoking uh, 20 cigarettes a day and i think if you continue smoking like this uh, it can harm your heart what do you think what do you think well, let's ask are you agree with me because everyone knows smoking causes the problem okay and in terms of diet you are on uh, uh, you are taking fruits vegetables you are on a good diet i appreciate that okay but at the same time make sure vegetarian are prone to have vitamin b12 deficiency okay and vitamin b12 deficiency can cause anemia and anemia can cause chest pain so keep it mind as well okay now the pharmacological options before i am confirmly diagnosed the angina i need to make sure my patient is safe in the meantime so gtr spray as i mentioned and aspirin 75 milligram if there is no contraindications for example allergic or any bleeding history now this one is also very important guys in the exam we have 10 to 12 minutes time our time is very very short so you don't need to mention everything all you need to do touch the important points okay as you mentioned you are driving mr uh, nixon but it's very important for you to stop driving until you've been investigated okay and you also need to inform dvla so dvla is a driving uh, authority licensing authority in the uk in bangladesh it could be different but the basic is same a taxi driver a truck driver with chest pain you need to advise him not to drive until it is investigated next two points guys uh, physiotherapy and occupational therapy so in this case our important part is occupational therapy okay uh, because he said i get pain when i climb stairs when i go uphill and as he is living in a house and he's living in the stairs in the first floor so what we can do very easily we can advise him okay you can uh, transfer your room to the downstairs okay even in his office where uh, for example if he's an office employee uh, you can write a letter you can write a letter to his employer uh, would you mind just change his uh, office from upstairs to downstairs okay so these are the things you need to mention this is called holistic approach you guys remember last uh, session i mentioned about the holistic approach so this is called holistic approach okay so Maria, uh, 345. Can you hear me, Maria? Yes, sir. Uh, do you, is there any questions from any uh, students or anybody? Uh, yet not, sir. I think no, okay. everybody is. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay, so I shall carry on, okay? Okay, sir. Okay. And anything else, uh, that means when you finish your consultation, you Thanks the patient. Thank you, Mr. Nexon. Uh, and is there anything else that you need to ask me? Okay, just to make sure your patient is satisfied or anything you missed, he, he might help you. Okay, so now comes to the mock, how uh, we did. Okay, so let's see. Introduce yourself to the patient, including your name and rule. The Maria has done it brilliantly. Okay. Then she confirmed, confirmed the patient's name and date of birth. You can do date of birth, but she confirmed her name, his name, that's fine. Explain that you would like to take a history from the patient. We took a consent. Okay. Presenting complaint. So you remember about the because this is a pain scenario and you remember about the socrates she asked about the site where is the pain onset in terms of onset guys is so important when the pain started first when he had last pain we will see in the management section why it is so so important and how the pain started abruptly or gradually because this will 
differentiate our differential diagnosis. Okay, a pain started gradually, it could be a sign of infection, could be from pneumonia. A pain started suddenly, abruptly, it could be a sign of dissecting thoracic aneurysm or acute MI. So site onset character, she asked about the character radiation, then any associated symptoms. She asked about uh, any recent trauma. That means uh, any musculoskeletal diagnosis is excluded and any pneumothorax could be excluded. Then she asked about any recent cough called running nose. That means any, any sign of um, a pneumonia, pericarditis is excluded. And then she asked about also pulmonary embolism. She, she asked about, coughing, are you coughing up any, any, any blood by any chance, hemoptysis? She is excluding uh, any chances of pulmonary embolism, which is quite, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very disruptive scenario and quite, uh, quite common. Then next question, time course. She was asking, has this been changed over the time? So important, why it is so important, the progression? Because if the, as uh, Mr. Nixon said, well, initially the pain was three out of 10, now it is getting seven out of 10. That means a stable angina is transforming to an unstable angina or NSTMI or MI. So the progression is so important. Then important is exacerbating factor, he said exertion. So we know that angina pain is uh, aggravated by exertion, relieved by the rest. When, when the angina pain also, also happens at rest, you need to think about unstable angina and your investigation should be quick up. Then the severity, she asked about the severity on a scale of zero to 10. It is so important. And uh, in UK, in my experience, the patients are so much trained about this. They can help you tell, well, it is three out of 10 at the beginning. Now it is seven out of 10. A, a patient with eight out of 10, nine, nine out of 10 pain, and you are in a GP settings, primary care settings. Okay, you need to, it will help you to think about referring the patient to the secondary care because such a bad pain. Or you can prescribe some painkiller after two hours, uh, <laughs> you review the patient. How is your pain? No, the pain still I'm um, nine out of ten. So if I, I will not take any risk, we'll send the patient to the secondary care for further investigation. <coughs> Sorry. Then the idea, concern, and expectation was very nicely mentioned, very nicely ad ad addressed as well. See, it's it's it's, it's common all over the world. When people have headache, they think brain tumor. When people have chest pain, they are concerned about heart attack. So as long as you mention why it is not heart attack or why it is heart attack, uh, if you explain to the patient, the patient will, will be fine. Otherwise, even after reaching home, going back home, he will still think about heart attack, heart attack, heart attack. Okay, sorry. Then summarize, summarize the patient presenting complaint. Okay, this is the one area uh, uh, our consultation was not uh, appropriate, 100%. Okay, so what we should do after presenting complaint, when I ask about the Socrates, I should summarize. Okay, Mr. Nixon, uh, you said you are having the chest pain for almost over a month, and it's an on and off chest pain and you get it mainly when you are climbing the stairs, you are exerting yourself and relieved by the rest. And you said it was three out of 10 at the beginning. Now it is seven out of 10 nowadays. So this is the way, one, you are clarify if anything you are missing. Two, you are telling the examiner, I'm listening. Okay, so this is the area, I think, um, uh, this is the area uh, we did not do well in today, but. Uh, uh, the consultation was very good otherwise. Okay, then the systemic inquiry. Uh, well, systemic inquiry is a plenty of question you can ask, but the wise thing is your symptom is related to which system? So we ask about that uh, tummy sore. Do you have any, any tummy sore? Do you have any problem with reflux? 
because peptic ulcer disease can cause this problem. Cholecystitis can cause this problem. Pancreatitis can cause this problem. So those are the associated um, system you can ask. Any problem with your bowel, any problem with your bladder. So these are the common things. Okay. And uh, we also mentioned about the cough core systemic question. We ask about temperature. We ask about other things. So systemic question, be very precious. Okay. The past medical history, yeah, our consultation, uh, it covered uh, very nicely. Uh, have you been diagnosed with, with high blood pressure, diabetes? Have you been diagnosed uh, with any other disease? Have you had any, um, any hospital admission, any surgery? Uh, because it's so important, especially mentioned about the surgery, mentioned about the hospital admission. Um, I had a patient last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had a patient from Bangladesh. And this lady, older lady, she recently immigrated to the UK and she was very lucky. Uh, she came to me and so she didn't need any interpreter. So the problem, what happened, she only brought a white page written uh, uh, something metoprolol and some other drugs name. And there is no information what has been done. And this, uh, the, the medicine sounds like more she was having ischemic heart disease, but we don't know anything. There, when I asked her, have you had any, any, any surgery in the past? She said, yes, I went to Dhaka and I, I paid, I don't know, I can remember three lakhs or five lakhs Dhaka and they did a, a heart surgery. So now I came to know that it was a cabbage coronary artery bypass grafting. So this was, these are the, this is the question will help you actually to reach your diagnosis. Then the drug history is very important here, uh, guys. Over the counter, because in the uh, in the UK, uh, you cannot buy uh, medicine from any pharmacy. Uh, so it, it's very strictly; uh, it has to be prescribed by a doctor or a nurse practitioner. But some some of the uh, drugs you can buy over the counter. For example, paracetamol, cocodamol, uh, ibuprofen. So you need to mention: Are you taking any over the counter medicine? Uh, and also sometimes we see people are buying pre-gabapentin -gaba from internet as well. And also uh, Biagra, they are buying from internet. So you need to ask about those questions. <clears throat> then the family history, we, uh, we very nicely, we took the family history. And in this case, he has two family members with premature cardiac disease. So this is giving me a very big information. This patient needs to be referred to the cardiology team for further investigation. So if you don't take the family history, it's a big blinder. And unfortunately, in this scenario, you may, you may be failed. OK. Social history. Yes, uh, we took the social history very nicely. So we asked the patient uh, about, uh, for, about his job, and he said he is a lorry driver. So uh, there is a rules in the UK, every country in the world, like if you get chest pain and if you are a driver, then you need to stop driving uh, until you've been assessed medically and also you need to be assessed by the DBL, Driving License Authority. Okay, a, a person having chest pain while driving on the wheel, he cannot, he is forbidden from driving. A person with cabbage, coronary artery bypass graft in four weeks in the UK, a person with angioplasty, seven days. A person with MI, four weeks again, uh, four to six weeks. So it's so important to asking the occupation when a person is coming with uh, chest pain. At the same time, for your differential diagnosis, a person uh, who has a heavy lifting job, heavy lifting job, uh, he, he, he might have a musculoskeletal problem rather than a cardiac problem. So occupation. Uh, Maftos, I remember medication, LRG, family ST, traveling. Traveling is also very important. Uh, if he travels and get any sickness in any other country, and, and he might have uh, myocarditis, he might have endocarditis, he might have rheumatic fever, rheumatic heart disease, you need to ask about the traveling history. Then the social history is so important, guys. If you don't ask the social history, you are not, you cannot make a holistic approach because in social history, uh, people who are coming with chest pain, a majority of them are elderly people and elderly people. And 
majority many of them lives alone so you need to make sure whether he is living in a house or in a bungalow if somebody living in a house and in the uh, in the first floor we can change it we can ask the occupational therapist they can go assess the house make him uh, make his room downstairs they can uh, fit a stair lift they can change his toilet high commode uh, uh, disabled toilet they can make his toilet to disabled toilet so that's why it's so important are you living in a house or are you living in a bungalow who who else lives at home with you if the person lives alone his his risk any person lives with his family uh, his risk is not the same the family member you can give advice about uh, how to take care of him third thing is uh, social service you can refer the patient an elderly lady lives alone you can refer to the <coughs> social service so they can uh, arrange care three times a day you, you also need to ask about his functional uh, baseline can you <coughs> can you do your personal care can you do your shopping all those stuff so are very important to make a holistic approach okay so the closing the consultation so you can summarize what has been uh, done so far what you uh, what has been discussed and in the before closing your consultation so you can discuss about the safety net advice as i mentioned earlier very very important okay when the patient needs to call the 999 when the patient take, needs to call, take the gtn spray okay a safety net then the follow-up when you are starting a patient on uh, symptomatic management of angina for example beta blocker you are studying on calcium channel blocker you are studying on nitrates and how things are uh, changing is it improving is it uh, uh, deteriorating uh, you need to make a follow-up at least four weeks six weeks uh, uh, two months depends on the individual case so review is a uh, safety rate very very important and follow-up arrangement is very very important and uh, if I don't think so today, I can make it. My time is very short today. If I can make any other um, uh, uh, another session, we might see. This is a real, real, real uh, patient in NHS. How this patient was managed in the NHS. A, a good primary care is very important. It's very important for in Bangladesh as well for the continuation of the care, for to prevent the hospital admission, and to prevent. Um, the wasting of healthcare money uh, uh, in in the uk europe all the developed country in the world they have a good primary healthcare system okay so the key communication skill active listening we, we that was very good in today's consultation we listened to the patient problem then we reflect on the patient problem summarizing yes um, uh, it was not too bad then signposting uh, sign posting was there uh, for example maria said okay uh, mr nixon uh, when it comes to the question of chest pain it is very important to discuss about our lifestyle so may i ask so now the patient knows she is going to ask about his lifestyle so you are giving a shot to the patient that what is coming next then she said uh, would you mind asking you do you smoke the other thing she mentioned very, very nicely, uh, Mr. Nixon, I'm sorry to hear that you lost your uh, your dad, you lost your, and your, your brother had a heart attack. And uh, would you mind asking me, asking you, uh, what age uh, was was it when they had heart problem, when, when your, your dad died, when your brother had heart problem? So sign posting, what you are going to ask, and give a shoot to the patient so he know what is coming next. Okay. So I think uh, this is all about today. So if I have uh, any chance, we may carry on uh, the same scenarios, actually how it's been diagnosed and how, sorry, how it's, uh, how it's been managed in the NHS. So before uh, ending today's session, guys, there's few things I need to tell you whatever the case whatever the scenario your communication skill is should be patient centered not the checklist 
P3 maftosa. This is for your brain not to forget important things. It's not you have to ask one by one. No. Establishing a rapport. Very good. Maria said, hello, Mr. Nixon. How are you? Um, can I call you Michael? Yes, you can call me Michael. A good rapport there. Many of us uh, confuse whether I should handshake or not. It's not necessary. It's up to you. It's not necessary. As long as you ask, you say hello to the patient. How are you? It's nice to meet you. Those are the nice things. That's fine. Empathy. That was very good in today. We have verbal empathy, non-verbal empathy. Here was the a, a, a lacking was there. A bit of lacking was there. Verbal empathy was there. When um, he said, I'm worried about chest pain. Maria asked. Why are you worried? What are you worried about? This is the verbal cue. She pick up, she responds, she uh, <coughs> reflect. Non-verbal was a bit lack. When I said, oh, no, I've been worried. I was, I was showing, um, uh, I was showing uh, afraid. I was, uh, I was a bit uh, thinking, uh, but she, 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 she did not uh, pick up this one. Oh, Mr. Nixon, you look a bit worried. Uh, you look um, a bit distressed. Uh, so non-verbal cue we need to pick up as well. Now the active listening throughout the consultation there was an active listening. How you can prove you are listening on your management section you are deflecting. Mr. Nixon you are smoking. It's not good for your health. Mr. Nixon your diet is good. I appreciate. Mr. Nixon you don't drink. I appreciate. And guys for alcohol, I am telling you both who uh, those who you are coming for UK, you have to know everything about the alcohol. You have to know all types of alcohol. You have to know uh, the recommended doses, 14 units for both men and women in, in, a, in a week, in a week time. Okay, and you have to know all the types of alcohol, uh, beer, those, those things. <clears throat> because I was, uh, myself, I was struggling about this. Okay. Then the game changing factors again, again, red flag, red flag. So what are the five red, red flag? One is MI, MP4, MI, pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, pneumothorax, pericarditis. This MP4, 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 you need to mention so that the examiner will know he's the guy is safe to handle a patient. Also, don't forget dissecting thoracic aneurysm. Uh, it's very uncommon, but we still get it. Then the idea, concern, expectation, we have covered psychosocial impact. So, so, so important, guys. Maria asked, any stress at work? Do you have any stress at home? Because we know anxiety, uh, psychological problem is one of the greatest cause of chest pain. Okay. So pneumonic, again, P3 maftosa. You guys uh, know it already. So it's just to make sure you are covering all the important stuff. It's not a checklist. Then the pneumonic, you know, if there's a pain, it is Socrates. Uh, it's just to uh, cover your important stuff. All right, that's me. Thank you very much. I hope you all enjoyed today's session. And you have, if you have any question, I have my email address at the beginning. And the question could be anything from today's uh, discussion from uh, for the plan exam or for anything you need to ask. So this is my email address. You can find me in the Facebook as well. Uh, it's Shamran Kaji, I am I'm on Facebook as well. Thank you, thank you very much. Maria. Yes, sir. All right, that's me, thank you. All right, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, this was really a wonderful session indeed. Uh, we didn't have much of this type of uh, senior-based uh, patient doctor interactive session. We are looking forward to this type of sessions in the near future. Before I, I forget, probably... Maria, before I forget, I appreciate you. You've done very, very well. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> I think our audience becomes so amazed that they become speechless. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. No uh, problem, then. Everyone take care, okay? Yes. Bye-bye. Sir, uh,